So let's talk a little bit about improving your ACT science score even if you have just a few days left. Just to be clear, I have seen students do this before. If they use a certain set of strategies to make sure that they are efficient in their prep, they're not wasting time, and they are actually actively making progress. There are a few things that you can keep in mind to do this in terms of experimenting with different strategies, practicing a certain amount, and you know just timing these things in the right way so that you can make the most of the time that you have left. That's what I'm gonna talk about here. These are things that I've done myself to improve my science score by 15 points overall, and a lot of that improvement did come in that cramming phase. A lot of the practice that I did came in that cramming phase. So it's very possible to do this, and I've helped lots of students do it as well in the tutoring that I do. So, uh, first of all, I'm, I have three or four different things that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to cramming for science. It's a mix, what I'm gonna talk about is a mix of well, you know, studying, how exactly you should study, when you should practice, and how much, as well as the types of strategies you can consider using um, and how to figure out which one's best for you, uh, and a couple other small tips about how you can see what those strategies look like, um, and we'll discuss all of those details in this video. First of all, let's start with the practice component. How much should you practice? When should you practice? I recommend for someone who has one or two weeks left, try to take about four-ish science practice sections per week, about, at least. Um, now, that seems like a lot, right? After three weeks, you're gonna have 12 sections under your belt, but this is under the assumption that you're doing more work for science than for all the other sections. If you're doing like one full practice exam for the other sections, and then you're doing four for science, then that's not too much work for the week. I know it's a lot, and just by default, that's like a full practice exam and a half almost or more, but the point is you're cramming, right? So you have to put in a decent bit of work. I'm, I'm saying four sections under the assumption that you're doing way less work for the other sections, okay? This is really if you're focusing in on science. And again, the reason I say this is because A, you're cramming, and B, you need to get rep you need to get reps in, right? Kind of like how an athlete gets reps in, or when you do this when you're exercising, you gotta get reps in, you gotta practice, so you can see what works for you and how you can actually grow. Um, and we'll, again, the strategies that I discussed will help you, f you actually like see that and bring that to fruition, but it starts with a practice schedule. So try to see how you can fit in four practice exams for science in a week. That's just a couple, that's two and a half hours of practice in a week just for science if you're doing just four sections a week. If you put it that way, it doesn't seem terrible. Uh, but again, you have to you can figure out where that works for you. Maybe you do one session every other day about, or you do you just on the weekends you do one on Saturday, or you do two on Saturday, two on Sunday, and that's your four. All right, you do it how you want. I'm not going to tell you exactly. Those are just some ways to do it. All right. So we established that you got to practice a decent bit to get the reps in. Once you have established that you have a practice schedule, uh, also I should say, you have six free practice exams linked below if you need practice materials, okay? Um, once you have ex you know, set that aside, that you know that you're gonna practice, you need to experiment with different things. And the main thing I experiment, that I recommend you experiment with on science is different timing methods. The main struggle on science is probably timing, apart from, you know, just understanding the passage. Um, we have lots of videos that go over like how to passage, like how to skim and how to read. We call it passage glancing uh, and how to annotate and how to do all this stuff, what to look for, what not to look for in the passages, what's the important information and how to find it. I'll, I'll link a video that describes how to do that. I'm not gonna get into that here because that's a lot of information um, and we have much longer, much more in depth and much better videos that will go over that. But for here, I'm just gonna tell you, first, I'm gonna assume that you've watched that and I, I'll have a link below so you can see that. But on top of that, you need to find a way to time yourself that works for you. So there's different ways to time yourself on science. One way is to just divide the 35 minutes into six portions, it's because there's six passages. So you spend one portion for each passage, that's about six minutes per passage. That way works, but the thing is, the science passages have different levels of difficulty. There are three science passage types. There's the conflicting viewpoints, which is the hardest. There is the research summaries, which is kind of in the middle. And then there's the data representation, which again, that's about the easiest. And when I say easy, medium, difficult, that's just what most students find it as. So when it comes to timing, the way that I, you, can, you can go about uh, experimenting with timing is spend more time on the conflicting viewpoints. So instead of six minutes, you do seven, still spend six minutes on the research summaries, but then for the data representation, you do five minutes. If you do this this way, um, it'll add up to about 35 minutes, considering there are two data representation passages for which you're spending five minutes. There are three research, research summaries passages for which you're spending six minutes. And there is one conflicting viewpoints passage for which you are spending seven minutes. So five plus five plus six plus six plus six plus seven. If I did my math right, that should be 35 minutes. And that's one way to go about timing. It's the same, still 35 minutes, 
but it allows you to put, this is the important part, this timing method allows you to put the time where you're most likely to need it. You're not gonna need seven minutes on our data representation passage, but you will probably need it on a conflicting viewpoints because there's gonna be more questions and there's more text that you have to read in the passage, right? So put the time where you need it. You do not wanna end up in the scenario where you spend an even amount of time for every passage and you find that the last two passages are the two hardest um, and you have like, 10 minutes left for them or 11 minutes. That's gonna be very hard to get through and your score is gonna tank at the end. You're gonna get a lot of those questions at the end uh, incorrect. So this is a good way to allot the time where it's necessary if you just know what passage type you're looking at and you spend the appropriate amount of time while you're doing that. And just a note about timing, make sure that you have a stopwatch or something or, or just a regular watch on hand and you are like actively looking at it every couple minutes so you know how much time you have left. Like this is something you have to do at least every few minutes. Otherwise, like you're not gonna, you're gonna get lost in the time. So set, set like benchmarks, right? If you are doing the six minutes per passage approach, then know that you, you after six minutes, you have to have the first one done. Then after about, you know, 12-ish minutes, you have to have the next one. Then, you know, yada, yada, yada. To be exact, it's five minutes and 50 seconds per passage, but you get the idea. You, you have to know your check marks and you ha or your checkpoints and you have to stick to those to make sure that you are actively looking at the clock so that you know when your checkpoint has arrived. If you miss your checkpoint, it's like missing your uh, stop on a subway. It's like, what are you doing? So, okay, bad analogy. So the last thing, or I have a couple more things. Um, when it comes to timing, another thing you should do is, um, and I actually left out one timing strategy, so I'm gonna go back and fill that in. So for the last timing strategy, I already mentioned I already mentioned two, right? I did the one where you divide everything evenly, and then the second strategy was where you allot time for each passage, depending on the passage type. The last of the three timing strategies is that you can take an approach where instead of doing six minutes per passage, maybe you do seven, and then on that last passage that you kind of left over, you just take a bit of an L. Like you just guess through it, maybe take 30 seconds to a minute on that passage and you just fill in circles, maybe answer a couple of the questions if you can. But the idea behind this approach is it's like a, it's like a last resort. If you're really just stuck on science and you don't know, you can't like improve on timing. If the timing is really, really difficult for you and you have a very short amount of time, then that last approach is actually something that you can seriously consider because it'll allow you to still get a high, like you'll get close to a 30, like 26, 27, if you answer the 80% of the questions right on the part of the past, on the part of the exam that you actually tried on. And then maybe about 20% uh, or 25 percent on the part where you guessed on if you do that then you can get like a 20 like a high 20 score um, but if you're going for like a 30 overall that's not an ideal uh, strategy just keep that in mind that's something you can do but it's not the best way to go about timing on science all right I just want to get that across and if you are really struggling with timing this is my next point it's that you should um, you should try to ease yourself into the timing so for example if you're already in a situation where you're doing that last that number three approach that I mentioned you should start to ease yourself into the approach of one of the first two where you spend even amount of time for passage or whatever um, by and the way that you do that is by cutting back on the amount of time that you spend that extra time that you spend on those initial passages so instead of doing seven minutes on the initial passages maybe you cut that back to like six minutes and 45 seconds or six and a half minutes and you slowly cut back so that you can ease yourself into the timing don't it's gonna be hard for you to jump straight to the timing um, that you ideally want because if you're very slow then uh, that's something that you're gonna have to work on but um, one way to practice that one way to ease yourself into that is to literally just cut back a little bit of time each time you take a practice exam uh, and again when I say cut time that means like take some time away from those passages where you're spending too much time and put it towards the end, okay? So that's something that I recommend you do. Um, the last thing that I'll say for science is my fourth point is that you should watch our uh, demo videos in addition to the videos about like what the strategy is and how to do it, but the demo videos where we actually go through science exams and go through science passages will show you how to annotate. Well, they'll show you how fast you need to be reading, how to time yourself, how to look at a passage, how long should you be spending looking at the passage? How long should you be spending looking at the questions? All of this is demonstrated for you in our demo videos for the science and for the reading as well. So I recommend you check those out. I will link some below as well. So if you want to actually do the strategy, this is a helpful way for you to get started. You can actually see what it looks like. It's not just me saying things, but it's actually you applying them or seeing how it's applied, all right? So that's the main thing for science. Again, just as a wrap up, you wanna take about four-ish practice sections per week at least. You want to uh, try different timing methods. I gave you three. You want to make sure that you're easing yourself into the different timing methods, like go from the, you know, the most um, compromised one to try to get to the ideal ones, like approach one and two. And then the last thing is watch the demo videos, watch the videos that are linked below that are showing you and telling you what the strategy is actually like and how to apply it. Because I didn't touch too much on the actual 
um, reading strategy per se or the annotation strategy. That's the main thing about science that you need to be doing, all right? So um, that's it for me. If you need any more help, if you want any more advice, one-on-one -on -one tutoring or anything like that, even free tutoring and practice exams, check out the links below for our website. We have tutoring resources available even if you're cramming. Uh, we have free content as well. Um, so feel free to check that out if you have any questions or if you want to get any more help from us. So that's it for me. Best of luck prepping and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. All right, see ya.